Good morning, good morning. Dr. Gary here on the road. Saturday morning in beautiful New Jersey. Cloudy, rainy, wet, and cold. <laughs> I wish I was in Florida. But anyway, we are dental practice brokers nationwide. We sell dental practices. We've been doing this for 13 years. I was a dentist for 25. Today's topic is the dental sales contract who writes it and who reviews it we'll get into that today so we are now in 28 states been doing this for 13 years dental practice brokerage we have 10 employees including two cpa accountants and uh, operations and we have uh, development acquisition team so we got a whole team for you, and plus a marketing uh, uh, marketing person, um, development person. So we have a great team to service you. We're available to you 363 days a year. We work every day except Christmas and Easter. You can reach us at nine uh, at East Coast time, uh, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. 201-663-0935, and. Our website is nationwidedentalpracticebrokers.com or dentalpracticeguide.com. Either way, you can always reach us. Now, the information, oops, excuse me, we're getting calls all the time. The information you're about to hear <coughs> is for informational purposes only. It is for entertainment purposes. It is it's not legal or business advice. Now, if you are thinking about selling to the DSOs, they are going through a lot of changes, and we're aware of those changes because we're in the in the uh, you know we're on the ground floor negotiating with them. So we can pick and choose. We are independent, but when you want to sell a practice, we can pick and choose who we think the best one for you is. Now, there are multiple ones out there. There's some consolidation going on. Some of them are having some trouble going to closing. Everything is changing in the year 22, 23. Because with the interest rates going up, everything has changed. So we want to be able to choose the best one for you. Now with the, uh, we worked with basically the largest DSOs in the country and some small ones. Often they will pay our commission. And generally the doctor, the seller does not have any commission to pay when you work with us. Secondly, when you work with my you team, when you work with my team, we also can get your legal fees based on certain criteria. We get your legal fees reimbursed upon successful closing. So you'll have no legal fees. There'll be a re reimbursement at closing for your legal fees based on certain criteria. Now, uh, today's topic, the dental contract or known as the APA asset purchase agreement um, the seller attorney, and hopefully, and we've said many times, you want to put these deals together, you got to have the right foundation. If you're selling to a private entity, you want to have the private buyer, private dentist, you want to pre-approve, that's what we do, pre-approve them at the bank, and we have them sign a non-disclosure agreement. So, third, we want them, the buyer, at a qualified dental bank. There aren't that many of them uh, around the country nationwide bank that can put the deal together the other foundation of course is dental attorneys you really want dental attorneys they've been at this game a long time and there's a good chance that the dental attorney for the buyer and the dental attorney for the seller may have worked together on the opposite ends of the table uh, on a deal and they've gotten through problems because every deal has headaches it's never easy and smooth occasionally but generally never um, but generally, it is the seller attorney and hopefully a dental attorney who will write the dental contract, the APA. And the reason for that is that the seller has some control over what he wants in the contract. Why not? It's your business. You might as well have some control. But obviously, you can't slate the contract or lean the contract uh, totally towards the seller. Um, because he's writing the contract, you still have to be fair. 
a well-written contract should be fair to the buyer and the seller, and you can slightly lean it towards the seller, uh, but generally the seller. Now, I have a situation right now. The buyer wanted to get this deal underway immediately, so the buyer's attorney, who was a dental attorney, who I recommended, and I get nothing out of the attorneys. I just need an attorney that's going to take you and I to the closing table. That's it. I want an attorney that's going to work nights, days, and weekends. Yes, on weekends. I expect some kind of response from them. Because uh, many times we'll do something, an event will happen on a Friday, on a Saturday morning. I want the attorneys to know. Because we had a situation where the seller had to reduce the asking price because the landlord's a headache. And uh, I... Uh, the seller finally agreed. <clears throat> and I wanted everybody to know on Saturday morning, not wait till Monday, that the deal was going through. Again, two dental attorneys, they were basically took the message on the weekends. So, and then and historically not in court. So the dental attorney writes up the contract. Generally, the seller's attorney will write the contract. Now you as a buyer will have a dental attorney too, and they'll represent you and they will go through your contract that was given, that will go through the contract that was written. So the seller's attorney will take it, take about a week to a little longer to create the contract. It's not a boilerplate. Certain elements are repeated, but every deal is a little different. Every deal has a little diff twist to it. And it could be just a few words or a few paragraphs, but a little different twist. <clears throat> There's also, if you want the, you as the seller, um, you may be asked, the buyer may ask you to stay on. So there's going to be an employment contract too. And sometimes the seller can write his own or have the buyer write this, the employment contract. But historically, seller writes the dental contract, gives it to the buyer's attorney, who then critique it and review it and make the necessary changes. Okay? Uh, once again, forget about a boilerplate contract. There's always something different. And the attorney has to uh, stand behind it. All right? So, and protect you. And he's, don't forget, he has a liability to protect you. That contract has to be written properly. Therefore, your seller attorney is going to write the contract the way he wants it and not use a boilerplate contract. So the seller's attorney writes the contract, gives it to you and your attorney. You'll make the revisions or comments on it. So it will go to you and your attorney as a buyer. You'll review it, read it, make your comments. You'll then take a couple days to a week for that, hand that back to the seller's attorney with your comments. Now you as the seller have to review the comments, the changes, and the buyer's and the uh, seller's attorney will either accept or negotiate on what you want. Negotiation is going to be restrictive covenant. It's going to be work in progress. You know, the work you're doing now before the closing, what's going to happen to that work? Because up until the closing, you always want to start. If, it, if it, uh, a guy comes in in pain, you're going to start the root canal. A guy comes in with a fractured uh, posterior uh, tooth, you're going to start the crown. So it's going to be work in progress that you're not going to finish. Irreversible work, we call it, by the time the closing comes. So you're going to negotiate on that, what those work are. Then you're going to negotiate on uh, remake policy. You did a crown eight months ago. Now the new doctor buys it. The crown fractures. The porcelain comes off. Who's responsible? Usually it's six months to a year goes into the contract. That's standard. Restrictive covenants, five years, ten miles, suburban area. Standard. Okay? Access to records. Seven years for you, the seller, you need access to the records in case you get sued or somebody has a fatality in a plane crash. Access to records. So that's what you need. Um, so that's all part of the dental contract. And that has to be written properly. A dental attorney knows all these terms and is accustomed to what is appropriate in your region. If you're in the city, like New York City, well, about a mile. It's a whole different area, you know? So uh, while you could say I, you want a restrictive covenant over the island of Manhattan, you can pick, can't compare the Upper East Side to the uh, financial district, Wall Street. It's like a different country. Nobody from the Upper East Side 
is going down to Wall Street. It's like, forget it. It's just not happening. So it's just different. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, all these elements come in it. <coughs> you want it written properly. All right. Well, that's it. Keep your eye on our next uh, email blast. We'll have new practices for sale. That's coming out every six to four to six weeks. We've got a bunch of new ones coming on. And we're always finding new practices. So give us a call. We'll be happy to talk to you. Thanks for listening. Keep tuned for the next one because a lot of new information is coming out. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye.